Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about Psalm 121. I lift my eyes. If you've known me for a while, you know that I once had a website called Psalm121.ca. And I would ask you to pray because somebody took over that domain when I decided to let it go, which doesn't bother me at all. What does bother me is that they put all of my old content onto that website. And that website is really out of date. And there's stuff on that website that shouldn't be up anymore. And the person who took it over has not returned my attempts to get them to take it down. So if you want to pray about that, that would be great. If you want to know what my real website is, is katherinewalden.com. So that's off my chest. Let's get to it. Psalm 121. I chose that name because frankly I couldn't find anything else and a friend who was helping me get that domain needed an answer so he suggested it because it talks about mountains and he knew I grew up in Calgary and so I said okay but it didn't have any particular significance to me until people kept on asking me why Psalm 121 and so I asked God and here is his reply. The title in the book is, I Lift My Eyes. Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. As a child, if I stood on my tiptoes, I could look out my upper floor bedroom window and see the Rocky Mountains just a wee bit. But every time I could see those mountains, it was really spectacular, especially on really crisp, cold days in the winter. However, a mountain is best viewed from a distance to appreciate all of its spectacular beauty. Majestic, serene, and visually overwhelming are just a few words that describe that view. A comforting reminder of stability in times of change and confusion. A picturesque mountain landscape feeds something deep in the soul, especially to a, an Alberta girl. However, a mountain is without compassion. A mountain won't come to your aid. It won't move close to prevent your foot from slipping. It doesn't watch over you with tender protectiveness as you sleep. The shade of a mountain may cast an impassive, cooling shadow over you if you happen to wander near it, but it's not moved by the fact that you are hot. And you actually don't have to do much to admire a mountain beyond traveling to a place where you can actually see the mountain. Your time, your heart, and your choices are still all your own. The mountain conveniently stays there until you decide that you want to have another peak. God, on the other hand, compels us to draw near and to enter into a relationship with him. He watches over you as you sleep, and he draws you close to his heart. He has carved you in the palm of his hand, he is your shepherd and your rock and your safe tower. He is the lover of your soul and he is your Abba Daddy. He is the one who is closer than any friend and he is your savior. He does not want just your casual admiration from afar. There's many people who say that they really admire Jesus that he was a good person and that so many things he said were really good. But that's as far as their relationship has gotten with Christ, if you want to call that relationship at all. I would call that more of a fan club. No, God wants more. He wants our heart. He wants us to be involved with him as much as he is involved with us. 
He wants us to push back from that fear of drawing close to him. He is giving us an invitation to draw near to him because our help doesn't come from an inanimate, disinterested God who sits up somewhere in the cosmos and just watches us all go by. God created us for so much more. So it's a little bit inconvenient and it takes a little bit of risk, but dare to draw near to the maker of heaven and earth.